Dodgers, get out of Dodge. Destination, Dodge City. Big Blue, back on track. Track meet again for TJ. Only this time do the Jackets win the race. Chalk up another W for the second ranked V-Ball team. Another sweep, maybe. The number four men's soccer club comes sweeping in against some Tritons. Iowa Western not even rattled by some rattlers. Rattling the rim in Canesville. Ready for some hoops hysteria? Hello, I'm JJ Davis and welcome to our latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone. Now, last we saw the Iowa Western football team, it was a sight I'm sure some Reaver fans would love to forget. Now, lucky or unlucky for Big Blue, Coach Stroh and company, a week off to think things over. Iowa Western resumes its uneven season on the road as the unranked Reavers ride into Dodge to tackle the 10th ranked Conquistadors. Now, I gotta be honest, I'm not sure what to expect. I'm used to these games being over by halftime, so what do I know? Here's IW TV student, The Sleeper, Joel Devick. A trip to windy Dodge City, Kansas is on the docket as the two and three Reavers face off with the number 10 Conquistadors. First quarter, our Western quarterback, Andre Nunez, bursts up the middle for a 17 yard dash, but IW does not score on the drive. Dodge City gets the ball for their first drive, and hometown kid, Caden Walters finds an open Dennis Johnson for the first down. Conks drive down the field, going four for four on third down conversions. Walters to Johnson with the fade, 13 yard TD strike, home side up 7-0. Nunez in the O get the ball back, the sophomore finds Nick Easley in the seam down to the five. A few plays later, Lorenzo Pratt makes an easy touchdown catch and puts Big Blue on the board. Nunez will throw this time, it's Lorenzo Pratt, it's a touchdown! Reavers nod it right back up at seven. Still in the first quarter, after a quick dark side three and out, Nunez is back showing off. He heaves it down the field and puts it right on DeAnthony McGriff's hands. Griffin, he's got him inside the five! That ends the first quarter and sets up Nunez to easily again. This time for a four yard score. Number nine throws for 240 yards and three touchdowns on the day. Defense takes the field again, and Andrew Van Ginkle blows up Walters in the backfield. The dark side gives up only one yard on the ground and 104 overall, 14 to seven, eyed up at the break. The offense continues to impress in the second half as the sophomore quarterback from California, Nunez, hurdles a defender for a 21 yard gain. The Osho grounds out 160 yards rushing on 49 attempts. AJ Bush walks it in. The visitors take a 21 seven lead. Still in the third and the Nunez easily connection is a match made in heaven. The sophomore receiver goes for 110 on six receptions and keeps the offense chugging until yet again as Nunez finds Easley for his second score, 24 yards right down the middle. The Reavers are making it rain with four straight touchdowns and a 28 to seven lead. Into a crazy penalty and delay filled final quarter, Dodge City tailback Rodney Murphy punches it in to bring the home side closer. The Conquistadors would make things interesting after a blocked Bobby Patterson punt leading to an open field return. Braxton Haley, 60 yards for the score. But it's too little too late as Iowa Western pulls out the win 34 to 29. We head into our homecoming and hopefully playing a top top five team in the country next week. So that kind of get our ears and eyes up, you know, so we can have momentum going into next week. McGriff, the Anferty, he hangs on. What's made you guys so good on the defensive side this year? Just being great on first down, because we know we'd be great on first down to stop the run, and after the pass, that's when we really put our foot on that throat. So we just really put them in bad predicaments and we just put our, um, put our foot on the pedal, just press the gas on them, and just play good deep. Hey, a win, a win on the road against a really good team, um, that's all that really matters. The way some things have gone this season and what these guys have been through, like I said, as long as we got more points on the scoreboard, it wasn't pretty at times. We played really well at times and not so well, but part of that's a credit to them. I mean, they're one of the top teams in the Jayhawk for a reason. After a poor performance before last week's bye against Coffeyville, the Reavers march into Dodge City and pull out a confidence-giving win against the 10th-ranked Conquistadors. Up next for Iowa Western, homecoming weekend, and a very good Garden City team. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Joel Devick. Thanks, Joel. Now, unlike in years past, 
each week with the Iowa Western football team is an adventure. And this week, no exception. Hey, the Reavers win, and that's all that matters. Andre Nunez, perhaps his best game of the season, three touchdown passes, and then Nick be quick. Nick Easley, over 100 yards receiving and a couple of scores. And 6'4", 240-pound South Dakota transfer Andrew Van Ginkel lives in the Dodge City backfield. Nine total tackles, three for loss, plus one and a half sacks. Is that all? Now, sure, the Conquistadors mounted a fourth-quarter comeback, but in the end, Iowa Western holds on and wins. And again, that's all we will remember. So let me get this straight. Crush, then second-ranked Butler at home, knock off 10th-ranked Dodge City on the road. This team has proven it's capable, no doubt. Still a lot to play for. Meanwhile, the fourth-ranked men's soccer team finding the back of the net but first up, the Yellow Jackets back at the wick, only this time a different story when we come back. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. There's a shelter pet who wants to meet you. Meet one today. Visit the shelterpetproject.org. Adopt. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. I'll always remember this moment. Gives me chills every time. Second round of the playoffs last year. Lewis Central humbles the Hawks in Ankeny. Well, here we go again. The Titans roll in unbeaten at 5-0, ranked fourth in the state. And you just know Ankeny would love to derail Duggan's juggernaut as well as get a little revenge. And the Hawks do just that to the tune of 28 to 14. Now, Mad Max Duggan, decent numbers, but LC flagged for eight penalties. The visitors miss three first half field goals. The Titans and that high scoring Osho failed to score in the second half. When was the last time that happened? Now, as Hacksaw Jim Duggan says afterwards, and I quote, now, first of all, they're a good football team. And on the flip side, we didn't play well. We just shot ourselves in the foot too many times. Okay, so Lewis Central drops its first game of the season, but I got a feeling LC will see Ankeny down the road. It's been that way for the last couple of years. Now to TJ. Stumbled last week, so it's time to get back on track. And with the track team, of course, that's put up some big numbers, so why not? 
It's the last regular season home game of the year for Thomas Jefferson. Here's IDUB TV student Bublin Brandon Taverti. The Yellow Jackets come swarming in, ready to face the Jayhawks. Early first quarter, Urbandale quarterback George Reese taking a shot downfield, but TJ Snake stoles with the INT. A few plays later, Jake Axtell takes the pitch. Ring, ring. Hello? Okay, I'll let him know. See you later, Hater. It's the touchdown activator. 78 yard TD run. The senior with 120 yards rushing on the night. TJ draws first blood and converts the two point conversion. Eight zip Thomas Jefferson. The visitors trail eight to seven in the second quarter. The senior QB Reese throwing a dime to Blake Lang. 48 yards to the house. 14 eight Urbandale. The Jackets trying to respond late first half. Cameron Baker, do you smell what he is baking? Throwing out stiff arms saying, chop please. The sophomore finishes with 71 yards on 12 carries. A couple plays later, Tyler Moore with the fullback dive, busting his way into the end zone. TJ ties the game 14-14. Next series. Jayhawks driving. Reese dropping back. Brandon Kennedy jumping up, making the catcher two feet in. The sophomore already ready for Sundays? A few plays later, third and five. Reese throwing the fade. Blake Lang reaching for the stars. A 10 yard scoring play. The senior finished with three catches for 80 yards and two touchdowns. Jayhawks up 21 14 at the half. Early third quarter, George Reese deciding to keep it on the option. Cutting up field. A 17 yard run. After a pass interference on TJ, the senior. His fifth touchdown pass to Javon Burnside from 14 yards out. Reese completes just nine passes, five for TDs. Thomas Jefferson then with the gift. Axtell fumbles, Jayhawks recover in the end zone. Urbandale pulls away from TJ, 41-14. When we started pulling away and started losing it because we were tired, we need to be disciplined more, and we're going to work on that this week. Starts off with film on Sunday. Go there, learn what the other team's going to do, and then got to go hard all, all week in practice, and then now translate in the next game. We were right with this team. The score was a little bit bigger than, it, than the game really was. Uh, it was a closer game than that. And uh, we know that Lewis Central had a similar game with these guys, but it went the other way for them. They struggled. It was real close at halftime, then Lewis Central kind of pulled away. Yeah, we're not scared of those guys. We know we can play with them. We know we can beat them. Thomas Jefferson throws just three passes on the night. The Jackets finish with over 300 yards of total offense. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Brandon Taverdi. Thanks, Brandon. Now, AL beat at Dowling Catholic. The Lynx trail 35 to zip after one. Hey, Frank Jerkovich catches a couple of TD passes. Abraham Lincoln, at two and five, is now assured of its third straight losing season. I feel bad for the Wolfman and the Lynx. And what about the Falcons? Well, third-ranked St. Albert's on the road as well. Now, these birds, I've said it once, I'll say it again, are on a mission. St. Albert is back to being the St. Albert that we used to know. No problem in Corning. 33 to nothing. Now Luke Gronstall's become the go-to guy. Easily over 100 yards on the ground and two TDs. Barajas, a couple of field goals, 31 and 34 yards out. St. Albert records its second shutout in the last three weeks. I'm telling you, these birds are on a mission. Moving indoors, now don't get hysterical. Hoops hysteria in Canesville. Before that, the Iowa Western Volleyball team sets the tone after the break. For more than a quarter century, thousands of Southwest Iowa athletes have relied on this team, Jenny Ed Sports Med. Their sole focus is to prevent diagnose and treat your sports injury. They even partner with the surgeons at Ortho West, ensuring you get your own exclusive roadmap back to action. Methodist Jenny Ed Sports Med invites all Southwest Iowa athletes to its free walk-in clinic, open every Saturday morning, August through October. Jenny Ed Sports Med.
Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know, wherever you are. Where you been? It's been a while for the Iowa Western Volleyball team. Try a couple of weeks. It's been longer than that since the second-ranked Reavers even lost a match. Try September 2nd, and Big Blue has yet to lose at home. Up next, it's time to tame some tigers. Here's IDUB TV student jumps right in, Riley Martin. Iowa Western serves it up against Marshalltown. Caitlin Cooper leads the way here with one of her team high 13 kills. The Reavers sweep the Tigers in three. We just need to take care of the ball on our side and, and we did that and I just told the girls like don't try to do too much, don't try to hit it too hard, you know just control our side and, and communicate and, and get the job done on our side and, and the game will take care of itself and that's what happened. We just got to keep winning, so I'm not sure if Western Nebraska is going to keep winning or not, but uh, we just need to take care of our job and one, two, three, four, five, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what we're ranked. I think this season we're really just focusing on our side and what things we can do and stuff like that, so I think we're just playing our game. And what would you like to see happen at the end of the season? Natty champs, baby. I think uh, the team is is more confident and this makes the more energy in the team because we don't make a lot of mistakes and this is good for us like keeping playing. We have a really tough weekend this weekend and so it's a, just a good test for us. We play really great competition, some uh, top 25 teams and, um, and then just let those matches uh, you know, mold us a little bit more and, and just fine tune some things and, and get better in the month of October so that come November we're, we're just playing our best ball and uh, we, can, we can dominate. The Reavers look to dominate at the Blinn Tournament in Texas. Iowa Western has its 18 match winning streak snapped but still wins three of four. Second ranked Big Blue at 23 and three heads to Indian Hills next. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Riley Martin. Thanks, Riley. High school playoffs just around the bend. Lewis Central, 22 and seven. St. Albert, 21 and four. AL, 11 and 22. And DJ, eight and 19. Now, of course, the regular season is nice, but seasons are made in the postseason. So you never know. You never know. How about some soccer? The second season, but a mere corner kick away. And the fourth ranked Reavers, three straight home matches. Now, first up, tied always tough Marshalltown. Next up, an old rival, and then some snakes. Here's IDUB TV student, the DH, Dylan Hall. The Reavers outgunned Iowa Central and Fort Dodge in early September. Big Blue going for the season sweep. 39th minute, IDUB on the attack. Leandro Avila with the right foot. Iowa Western up 1-0 at the half. Home team explodes in the second half. 46th minute, Joe Hood breaks through. Reavers with 25 shots overall and nine on goal. Big Blue up 2-0. Later in the 59th minute, Avila drops it into Kwasi Allen who puts it home. IW leads 3-0. Just four minutes later, Willie Ramirez knocks it into the top corner. Iowa Western gets the 5-1 win. Iowa Central is a rival game, so I mean, there's a lot of anxiety early in the game. It's it's always a tough battling, a lot of hard tackles. People just really want to get after it. Uh, neither of these teams ever want to lose, but uh, luckily we've had the upper hand lately. We started off uh, making good chances and we couldn't finish, but at the end we find we found a way to to finish and the, the goals came right away. Well, this is our toughest stretch. Uh, we just played Marshalltown, uh, tied them, and then Iowa Central is always a battle. Um, and then we have Otero coming up, and they're the only team that beat us last year until we got to the national tournament. And then I believe we followed up with uh, Indian Hills. So that's kind of all the top teams in our conference. 
The fourth ranked Reavers get another big conference victory. Iowa Western trips the Tritons for the second time this year. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Dylan Hall. Now here's Brady Engel. Number four Reavers kicking off against the Rattlers of Otero. 19th minute, Pierre Lebrun with a brilliant run finds the far post to give the home team a 1-0 lead. Less than three minutes later, Machias Fejas gets his first shot blocked, but his second one fools the keeper. 2-0 Idub. Seconds after, the ball falls to Joao Birch. And he finds the back of the net with his right foot. The freshman with his seventh goal of the season. 3-0, big blue. Great first half, Abubakar Cholombo chases down the ball, sends in the cross, and it's finished at the back post by Reese Allen. Four zip, home team at the half. Iowa Western with 35 shots in the game. Otero trying to get back in it. But Yushihiro Hayami from Japan coming up big. The freshman keeper with nine saves on the day. Reavers win it 4-0. I think as a collective unit we pressed really well and we capitalized on uh, the chances that we needed to early on. Um, and then I think once we got the four goals the mentality sort of dropped a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean I think the key was just we, we scouted them well prior to them coming here and we were much more prepared for them. Mentally we got to be stronger, you know. We gotta be strong in the, in the final third when we get our chances, keep our composure, and we just gotta bury them. Iowa Western closes out the regular season with three of its last four matches on the road. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Brady Engel. Next up, our play of the week indoors, outdoors, who you like. What's to like about Hoops Hysteria? Why, everything, of course, on the other side. Council Bluffs is a growing, vibrant community. It's becoming a modern 21st century community. We will be the largest free Wi-Fi hotspot in the United States. Our vision is about building a community where families want to live and businesses want to locate. We see that as a great um, potential enhancement for future growth in the city. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. One season just rolls right into another. It never ends, but that's the way we like it. Never a dull moment. The college basketball season is here, and Reaver fans get their first taste of jump shots and slam dunks with the annual hoedown with the guys and gals. In these parts, pot now we call it Hoops Hysteria. Yeehaw! Here's Idaho TV student Steady Ben Smith. <laughs> Hoops Hysteria marks the beginning of the college basketball season. First up, the men and women compete in the three-point contest. Bear Henderson and Zarin Goodrich knock them down for the win. 
On to knockout. It's down to a cheerleader who misses and Alicia Mountain who doesn't and wins. Time for the fan favorite, the slam dunk contest. Donovan Walker between the legs. And the judges. Next up, Marquel Beasley with the powerful jam. But with assistance from Isaiah Wade, it's Donovan Walker who ends the night sending the fans home happy. We're excited to be part of this. You know, you go through the recruiting process. Uh, you go through getting the chance to evaluate your ball club. You have a good, uh, I think our guys had a really good fall season of conditioning and getting your lungs and your legs ready. Uh, but now it's time to get started. It's been a while since we actually been back on the Iowa Western court. Um, we all getting back to it, getting back to our games. Everybody's getting back in the rhythm. I think we've got a lot more shooters this year. Um, I think last year you would have seen a, a real you know, inside presence to our game. I think this year you're going to see a ton of girls that can shoot and even post included, which is really good into our system. We, we play that up-tempo style and, of course, the defensive side of things and all of our girls, one through five, um, guards and post, they can all pick up full court 94 feet and get after it. It's going to be really exciting. The women get after it on November 4th at Barton CC, while the men tip off their season November 1st at Concordia against the JV. For the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Ben Smith. Now it's time for our play of the week. What'd you like? See anything that tickled your fancy? Hoops Hysteria comes to Canesville. Iowa Western's Donovan Walker cranks up the volume. The sophomore guard from Maryland with a little razzle dazzle. The Reavers, Donovan Walker with our dunk or up play of the week. Round and round we go where we stop. Nobody knows. Now, football, volleyball, soccer, now some basketball, and so on. Still crazy after all these years. Now, remember, as always, to keep it here for more news and information in your community by tuning in to the Council Bluffs News with Aaron Zach. And so, for this latest edition of the Bluff Sports Zone, I'm J.J. Davis, and as always, I'll see you around.